Good day and God bless you and welcome to the Bible reading in chronological order. I just want to thank you once again for participating in this venture with us and I pray that as we continue to do so that this would be a helpful format for you to get into the Word of God to be able to keep track of reading through the Word of God not fall behind. I pray that it would be a blessing to you. Please if you find that it is doing well for you and it is and it is adding value to you, share this with your friends and family. Uh, it really is just a method that we want to have just to help people read through the Word of God and get familiar with the Word of God and so that we can recognize Him even in our day. We're still busy in the book of Genesis, but today we actually close the book of Genesis. And we're going to be going through chapters 48, 49, and 50. Let's get straight into it. Let's look at chapter 48. We see that Joseph takes his two sons now to visit his sick father. And Jacob repeats to Joseph God's promise and blessing to him. And that how God gave him the land of Canaan for an everlasting possession. And then Jacob adopts Joseph's two sons and blesses them. Now take note of the way in which Jacob blesses them. We see that the younger is preferred over the elder. Now this will come in, you know, when, when we looking at doctrine later on as we go through other passages, we will come back to this, how the hands of Jacob were switched and how he blessed the younger before the elder. But just remember that, take note of that, be cognizant of that, because we will definitely see it in passages going forward. So just remember that. Then we get to chapter 49. And here Jacob calls his sons together and speaks to them or uh, rather pronounces over them blessings or what will befall them in the last days. I love how it says what will befall them in the last days. Now please go through all of this with some concentration because we see that the standards or the banners of these sons of Jacob were established because of what Jacob spoke over them at this time. But I want to take specific focus on verses 10 and 11, mostly in the light of the royal and messianic lineage. There is so much imagery in here, it is scary. I told myself I wasn't necessarily going to get into it, but I cannot help myself. So I'm quickly going to go through some. It says, The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet, until Shiloh come. What is that talking about? That is saying that that kingship, that royal line will not end until Shiloh come. Who is Shiloh? Well, we, we understand, right? And then we see binding his foal. Now this is talking about that Messiah that would come. Binding his foal unto the vine. Now this is so amazing. What is a foal speaking of? That donkey. We remember that Jesus, when he was brought into Bethlehem, uh, when he was still, when he was still in, in the womb of Mary, he was brought in on a donkey. When Jesus drove, uh, rode into Jerusalem, he rode in on a donkey. And he is that true vine. Okay? So you see there in 11, the, but he's full unto the vine, binding his foal unto the vine and his ass's colt unto the choice vine. The choice vine, that is the vine that was chosen above all else, right? He washed his garments in wine. What does that wine speak of? Yes, the wine speaks of the stimulation of revelation. It speaks about the Holy Ghost. But Jesus, at the time of the communion, he speaks about the wine as the blood, right? So his garments were washed in the blood, his clothes in the blood of grapes. Now you see that. It is so beautiful. You can, you can have a whole sermon just on that in itself. But let's carry on. I didn't want to get into it too much, but I just couldn't help myself. It was just too beautiful. Then we get to chapter 50. And in chapter 50, we see that Joseph mourns uh, at the death of his father, commands that his father be embalmed, and travels with a large company to bury his father in the place of, of Jacob's fathers there. Then we see that Joseph then prophesies to his brothers that they will return to Canaan. 
and then it talks about uh, Joseph dying at the age of 110 years old, but made the children of Israel swear that they would take his bones with them when they returned to the land of Canaan. Now that is really important. We spoke about it yesterday. What was that speaking about? It was to be buried in the right place. And with us as well, in baptism, we need to be buried in the right place. We need to be buried in Jesus Christ. But there's so much beauty in all of this. And I know I'm taking a bit of time, but we have just closed out the book of Genesis now. And there is a verse here that just says, Ye thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good. And this is basically the whole book of Genesis in a nutshell. I'm just going to go through it in terms of the in terms of what happened god creates and he makes everything good and then man in the garden of eden man and woman fall and in the fall death is intro introduced into the world now with that we see that the 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 story is then the history focuses on a couple of great men within there but each of these men are deeply flawed I think the only one that's focused on a little bit, which doesn't give us the flaws, was Enoch. And it says Enoch walked with God after he begat Methuselah. Now, we don't know what happened before then. So, we, you know, but after he begat Methuselah, he walked with God and he was not for God took him. So he was caught up. But when we're dealing with all the other characters, we see Noah, we see Abraham, we see Lot. We see Jacob. We see all of these great men, but they are deeply flawed. And why is that? Well, it is because we understand that in our fallen state and in our fallen humanity, we cannot achieve eternal life. But the book of Genesis concentrates on a Messiah that would come, a Redeemer that would come, one that would come, and again, Genesis chapter 12. In thee, in thy seed, will all the families of the earth be blessed. So someone is going to come that will redeem and pay the price for the sin that has overtaken the world. It is really important that we understand from Adam right down to Joseph, each one of them were deeply flawed. But we see that the life of Joseph then Typing the life of Messiah, Joseph was a suffering servant that attained this, uh, this royalty. And you see the Messiah that would come, he would be a suffering servant, but one that would redeem all of mankind. Just as we close out today, I just want to let you know, if you haven't already figured this out, uh, you know, but... It's not even the end of January yet, and we have finished two of the large books of the Old Testament. And this is absolutely wonderful to realize that it is as easy as that, it is as interesting as that, to go through the Bible, to study the Word of God, and to know that He is, he is faithful. Please, don't lose track now. In fact, invite your family and friends along to join you in this venture, because the Word of God is so beautiful so wonderful, and all we pray is that you would draw closer to him through his word. May the Lord bless you, may he keep you, may his face shine upon you, may he give you peace. God bless. Chapter 48 And it came to pass after these things that one told Joseph, Behold, thy father is sick! And he took with him his two sons Manasseh and Ephraim, and one told Jacob and said, Behold, thy son Joseph cometh unto thee. And Israel strengthened himself and sat upon the bed. And Jacob said unto Joseph, God Almighty appeared unto me at Luz in the land of Canaan and blessed me and said unto me, Behold, I will make thee fruitful and multiply thee. And I will make of thee a multitude of people and will give this land to thy seed after thee for an everlasting possession. And now thy two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh, which were born unto thee in the land of Egypt before I came unto thee into Egypt, are mine. As Reuben and Simeon, they shall be mine. 
and thy issue, which thou begettest after them, shall be thine, and shall be called after the name of their brethren in their inheritance. And as for me, when I came from Padan, Rachel died by me in the land of Canaan, in the way, when yet there was but a little way to come unto Ephrath, and I buried her there in the way of Ephrath, the same as Bethlehem. And Israel beheld Joseph's sons and said, Who are these? And Joseph said unto his father, They are my sons, whom God hath given me in this place. And he said, Bring them, I pray thee, unto me, and I will bless them. Now the eyes of Israel were dim for age, so that he could not see. And he brought them near unto him, and he kissed them and embraced them. And Israel said unto Joseph, I had not thought to see thy face, and lo, God hath showed me also thy seed. And Joseph brought them out from between his knees, and he bowed himself with his face to the earth. And Joseph took them both, Ephraim in his right hand toward Israel's left hand, and Manasseh in his left hand toward Israel's right hand, and brought them near unto him. And Israel stretched out his right hand and laid it upon Ephraim's head, who was the younger, and his left hand upon Manasseh's head, guiding his hands wittingly, for Manasseh was the firstborn. And he blessed Joseph and said, God before whom my fathers Abraham and Isaac did walk, the God which fed me all my life long unto this day, the angel which redeemed me from all evil, bless the lads, and let my name be named on them, and the name of my fathers Abraham and Isaac, and let them grow into a multitude in the midst of the earth. And when Joseph saw that his father laid his right hand upon the head of Ephraim, it displeased him. And he held up his father's hand to remove it from Ephraim's head unto Manasseh's head. And Joseph said unto his father, Not so, my father, for this is the firstborn. Put thy right hand upon his head. And his father refused and said, I know it, my son, I know it. He also shall become a people, and he also shall be great. But truly his younger brother shall be greater than he, and his seed shall become a multitude of nations. And he blessed them that day, saying, in thee shall Israel bless, saying, God make thee as Ephraim and as Manasseh. And he set Ephraim before Manasseh. And Israel said unto Joseph, Behold, I die, but God shall be with you and bring you again unto the land of your fathers. Moreover, I have given to thee one portion above thy brethren, which I took out of the hand of the Amorite with my sword and with my bow. Chapter 49 And Jacob called unto his sons and said, Gather yourselves together, that I may tell you that which shall befall you in the last days. Gather yourselves together, and hear ye sons of Jacob, and hearken unto Israel your father. Reuben, thou art my firstborn, my might, and the beginning of my strength, the excellency of dignity, and the excellency of power. Unstable as water thou shalt not excel because thou wentest up to thy father's bed, then defilest thou it. He went up to my couch. Simeon and Levi are brethren. Instruments of cruelty are in their habitations. O my soul, come not thou into their secret, unto their assembly. Mine honor, be not thou united, for in their anger they slew a man, and in their self-will they dig down a wall. Cursed be their anger, for it was fierce, and their wrath, for it was cruel. I will divide them in Jacob and scatter them in Israel. Judah, thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. Thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemies. Thy father's children shall bow down before thee. Judah is a lion's whelp. From the prey, my son, thou art gone up. He stooped down, he couched as a lion. And as an old lion, who shall rouse him up? The scepter shall not depart from Judah nor a lawgiver from between his feet, until Shiloh come, and unto him shall the gathering of the people be, binding his foal unto the vine, and his ass's colt unto the choice vine. He washed his garments in wine, and his clothes in the blood of grapes. His eyes shall be red with wine, and his teeth white with milk. Zebulun shall dwell at the haven of the sea, and he shall be for an haven of ships and his border shall be unto Zidon. Issachar is a strong ass couching down between two burdens. And he saw that rest was good and the land that it was pleasant and bowed his shoulder to bear and became a servant unto tribute. 
Dan shall judge his people as one of the tribes of Israel. Dan shall be a serpent by the way, an adder in the path, that biteth the horse heels, so that his rider shall fall backward. I have waited for thy salvation, O Lord. Gad, a troop, shall overcome him, but he shall overcome at the last. Out of Asher his bread shall be fat, and he shall yield royal dainties. Nephtali is a hind let loose, he giveth goodly words. Joseph is a fruitful bough, even a fruitful bough by a well, whose branches run over the wall. The archers have sorely grieved him, and shot at him, and hated him. But his bow abode in strength, and the arms of his hands were made strong by the hands of the mighty God of Jacob. From thence is the shepherd, the stone of Israel. Even by the God of thy father, who shall help thee? And by the Almighty, who shall bless thee with blessings of heaven above, blessings of the deep that lieth under, blessings of the breasts and of the womb. The blessings of thy father have prevailed above the blessings of my progenitors unto the utmost bound of the everlasting hills. They shall be on the head of Joseph, and on the crown of the head of him that was separate from his brethren. Benjamin shall raven as a wolf. In the morning he shall devour the prey, and at night he shall divide the spoil. All these are the twelve tribes of Israel. And this is it that their father spake unto them and blessed them. Every one according to his blessing he blessed them. And he charged them and said unto them, I am to be gathered unto my people. Bury me with my fathers in the cave that is in the field of Ephron, the Hittite. In the cave that is in the field of Machpelah, which is before Mamre, in the land of Canaan, which Abraham bought with the field of Ephron, the Hittite, for a possession of a burying place. There they buried Abraham and Sarah, his wife. There they buried Isaac and Rebekah, his wife. And there I buried Leah. The purchase of the field and of the cave that is therein was from the children of Heth. And when Jacob had made an end of commanding his sons, he gathered up his feet into the bed and yielded up the ghost and was gathered unto his people. Chapter 50 And Joseph fell upon his father's face and wept upon him and kissed him. And Joseph commanded his servants, the physicians, to embalm his father, and the physicians embalmed Israel. And forty days were fulfilled for him. For so are fulfilled the days of those which are embalmed. And the Egyptians mourned for him threescore and ten days. And when the days of his mourning were past, Joseph spake unto the house of Pharaoh, saying, If now I have found grace in your eyes, speak, I pray you, in the ears of Pharaoh, saying, My father made me swear, saying, Lo, I die in my grave, which I have digged for me in the land of Canaan. There shalt thou bury me. Now therefore let me go up, I pray thee, and bury my father, and I will come again. And Pharaoh said, Go up and bury thy father according as he made thee swear. And Joseph went up to bury his father, and with him went up all the servants of Pharaoh, the elders of his house, and all the elders of the land of Egypt, and all the house of Joseph, and his brethren, and his father's house. Only their little ones and their flocks and their herds they left in the land of Goshen. And there went up with him both chariots and horsemen, and it was a very great company. And they came to the threshing floor of Atad, which is beyond Jordan, and there they mourned with a great and very sore lamentation, and he made a mourning for his father seven days. And when the inhabitants of the land, the Canaanites, saw the mourning in the floor of Atad, they said, This is a grievous mourning to the Egyptians! Wherefore, the name of it was called Abel Mizraim which is beyond Jordan. And his sons did unto him according as he commanded them. For his sons carried him into the land of Canaan and buried him in the cave of the field of Machpelah, which Abraham bought with the field for a possession of a burying place of Ephraim the Hittite before Mamre. And Joseph returned into Egypt, he and his brethren, and all that went up with him to bury his father after he had buried his father. And when Joseph's brethren saw that their father was dead, they said, Joseph will peradventure hate us and will certainly requite us all the evil which we did unto him. And they sent a messenger unto Joseph, saying, Thy father did command before he died, saying, So shall ye say unto Joseph, Forgive, I pray thee now, the trespass of thy brethren and their sin. For they did unto thee evil, and now we pray thee, forgive the trespass of the servants of the God of thy father. And Joseph wept 
when they spake unto him. And his brethren also went and fell down before his face, and they said, Behold, we be thy servants. And Joseph said unto them, Fear not, for am I in the place of God? But as for you, ye thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good, to bring to pass as it is this day, to save much people alive. Now therefore fear ye not, I will nourish you and your little ones. And he comforted them and spake kindly unto them. And Joseph dwelt in Egypt, he and his father's house. And Joseph lived an hundred and ten years. And Joseph saw Ephraim's children of the third generation. The children also of Maker, the son of Manasseh, were brought up upon Joseph's knees. And Joseph said unto his brethren, I die, and God will surely visit you and bring you out of this land unto the land which he sware to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. And Joseph took an oath of the children of Israel, saying, God will surely visit you, and ye shall carry up my bones from hence. So Joseph died, being an hundred and ten years old. And they embalmed him, and he was put in a coffin in Egypt. The end of the first book of Moses called Genesis.